What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender modifier tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about the shrink wrap modifier and how you can use it to wrap objects along other objects inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the shrink wrap modifier is going to allow you to shrink objects to the surface of another object. And so basically what it's going to do is it's going to find the various vertices of your objects and it's going to try to bend them or um, kind of merge them to the face of another object. And so we can talk a little bit more about this in a minute. Um, but first off, let's take a look at a simple way to do this. So let's say, for example, that we had um, a pair of spheres like this one, right? And what we want to do is we want to take this surface Right? So if I tab in here, notice how it only has four corners and no interior geometry, and we want to bend it along this surface right here. And so to do that, what we might do is we might select our plane, and we might go into our modifiers section and add a shrink wrap modifier to this. Right. So if I click on this, what it's going to do is it's going to add this modifier, and it's going to tell me to find a target. And so the target is going to be the object that we shrink our mesh to. So in this case, we want to use the sphere. but Right now, if I do this, notice how we have a problem. So right now, it doesn't give us a very good result. And so there's a good reason for that. The good reason for that is because we don't have any geometric detail inside of our object, right? So again, if we tab into edit mode and look at this um, in vertex select mode, notice how we only have the four vertices in here. Well, what this is doing is this is basically shrinking this down and it's finding the closest vertices of the sphere right here, right? So notice how this is actually finding the vertices and trying to shrink the object down to it. But since there's no geometric detail in here, nothing is actually happening. So what we want to do instead is I've got another plane over here. I'm going to tab into edit mode. Notice how this one, I have subdivided this surface right here. And I am actually going to rotate this sphere just because the geometry will be a little bit better to shrink this too. But remember, this one has more vertices in here. Well, because it has more vertices in here, this gives it more geometric data to figure out what to shrink this to. Let's add a shrink wrap modifier to this object. So I'm going to add a shrink wrap. I'm going to give it a target of the sphere right here. Well, notice what that does is that actually shrinks this down to the surface of our sphere like this. And so you're getting a bunch of Z fighting in here because we haven't given it an offset. Basically what this is doing is this is just moving this down and then rendering the object um, in the 3D space um, so that we can see it. But you're getting flashing because these are occupying the same space in the 3D space. But notice how this is doing what we wanted it to do. It's shrinking it to this object. And if I was to move it around, so notice how if I move this plane around in the 3D space, this changes the way that this shrinks to our object in 3D as well. Because this is a modifier, it's live whenever we make changes. But now let's take a look at one of the options that's over here in the shrink wrap modifier. There's actually a couple options I want to look at. But first, notice how there's an option in here for offset. So if I was to turn my offset up a little bit, notice how now this surface is up above the surface of my sphere right here, right? The reason why is because we gave it an offset, which is a distance to keep it away from the target. So even if you put that offset to something really, really small, like 0 0.01, notice how you don't get the Z fighting in here anymore because we've given this an offset. So we've said, hey, don't put this right on top of this, put it 0 0.01 meters above this. And so one thing I want to pay attention to is let's say we took these two objects and duplicated them over here. And let's say that we took our sphere and we added a subdivision surface modifier. Well, notice how when we add a subdivision surface modifier to our sphere, our result gets better inside of our 3D space. And the reason for that is because we now have more geometric data or more points that a Blender can use in order to shrink this along the surface. If I was to add another level of subdivision, notice how I'm getting better results in here as well. That's because this is finding the nearest point on the surface and shrinking the vertices based on those points. And notice how this does adjust along with our object like this, it is live. So you can use things like subdivision surface modifiers and other things like that to get a smoother result. You can also change your wrap method. All right, and so there's multiple different wrap methods in here to help you get different kinds of results. So this last one, right, was using surface points. But if we were to switch to the project option, what that's going to do is that's going to project the object down 
in a direction in order to find your final result. Well, notice how because I've scaled this up, it's only scaling or it's only projecting the vertices down that are actually within the footprint of the object down below. So if I was to scale this, notice how I get a better result and a smoother result. So project can be very valuable because you can see how we're getting a better result in here with the project function than we were with the nearest surface point option. So another thing to notice about this is there is an option for positive and negative. So if this was set to positive, right, then this is gonna project in the other direction. And I would actually have to move it down below this object in order to get that result. So if you're not getting any results in here, you can try switching that to negative instead of positive like this. So there are some other things in here like subdivision levels. So basically what the subdivision level is going to do is it's going to apply a temporary subdivision to the object's geometry before computing the wrap. And so notice how you can also set the axis that the object is going to project along. So you can use this to force projection along an axis. Usually I leave these unselected because what this is going to do is it's going to project based on the normal direction of the object. So for this, for example, the normals are facing this way, so it's gonna to default to projecting along the object normals. All right, so then there's also an option down here for auxiliary target. Um, and so what the auxiliary target is gonna do is it's gonna allow you to add a second mesh. So if I was to select the cylinder right here, well now, if I move this along the Y axis, notice how it's gonna shrink wrap along both targets. So you can use this in order to shrink wrap al along multiple different targets inside of Blender. So um, if you have different shapes together, and so this is cool because this is actually live as you work in here, you do have to be a little bit careful with the way your geometry merges. So for example, if I was to move this cylinder over, notice how it's shrink wrapping to the auxiliary target and not to the surface right here. I don't really know how to fix that, um, it's just something to be kind of aware of when you're working with this. But this could definitely be an easy way in order to shrink wrap along multiple objects in Blender. All right, so another wrap method method that's in here is the nearest vertex, right? So previously project is gonna project along a direction, usually the normal direction. This one is going to find the nearest vertex of your object and it's going to take all of your geometry. So if I tab in here and look at this, it's gonna move all of them to the nearest vertex. So if you look at this, you can see how this is following along my target geometry, probably a little bit better than this one is over here um, in the sense that it really matches up with that geometry, but you can get some like weird stretching and other things like that. So just be careful with that one, but you can definitely use this in order to get that different result. So, and a lot of the time you're gonna try multiple different kinds of shrink wrap uh, methods in here. So don't just get stuck on one, make sure you try the others as well. All right, so then this last option, target normal project, what that's going to do is that's gonna use the surface normals of the target, and it's going to try to shrink wrap this based on those normals. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna provide probably a better result than the nearest surface point, but it's gonna take a lot longer to do. So if you have really complex meshes, this may not be the one for you, but basically what you can do is you can set it to target normal project, and it's going to use the normals of the surface and kind of the directions those are facing in order to try to figure out the best way to wrap this. And so if we were to tab into edit mode real quick and turn on our surface normals right here, you can see the direction those normals are facing. Well, it's using that direction in order to figure this out, right? So if I was to tab back out of here for a second, scale this up, and then look at it again, what it's trying to do is it's trying to align these surfaces with the nearest surface normal. So if I was to tab into edit mode on this one, and you can't really see it in edit mode because this is a modifier, I'm pretty sure what this is doing is it's coming in and it's finding the closest normal, and it's kind of trying to interpolate based on those normals um, in order to try to line this up as best as possible. So again, something to kind of play around with, but be aware that the target normal project is probably going to have a um, significant slower result than the others. All right, so and then one other thing that I kind of skipped over and that I want to make sure I at least talk on a little bit is the snap mode. So um, three out of the four of these do give you the option to adjust your snap mode. That's basically going to adjust how the vertex is moved to this target point. So um, what that means is that means that different selections are going to act different ways. So for example, if you were to use the on surface function, that's always going to snap your object, even if it's bigger, to 
your surface right here, right? So even though this is larger, it's always going to move all of the different vertices where some of the others act in a different way. So for example, if I was to select the option for outside, so notice how when I select the option for outside, nothing is happening at the moment. However, if I move this down, so if I was to tap the G key and then the Z key, notice how, so anytime this is actually intersecting with your sphere, it's going to snap to the object, but anything outside of the sphere isn't going to snap to the object. So if I scale this down, notice how then it's acting a lot like the nearest surface point, but then you get this kind of different result when you scale this to the outside. Notice how you can still adjust the offset in here as well. But then if we select the option for inside, it's gonna act exactly the opposite way. Right? So if I scale this out like this, we're gonna adjust our offset a little bit. Notice how now what this is gonna do is this is only, it's only gonna adjust the vertices that are outside of the target object. So what that means is anything inside the object are not moved. So notice how now if I was to move this um, along the surface right here, notice how it's only moving the vertices for the parts of the object that are outside of this sphere. So that one, I'm not as, I'm not 100% sure exactly when you would use that one. The, the outside one, I could see a lot better, right? So if we were to set the offset right here, I can totally see how you might use this. Though you're gonna have some extra material around the outside. But um, the other one, I'm not really 100% sure. So I'd really recommend just kind of playing around with those and seeing which results you get and which ones you like, but they are there as options. And then there's some really interesting applications that you could use this for, like say for example, that you, so let's say you had a cylinder like this one and you wanted to wrap it with something. So what you could do is you could take an object like this that's around this, you could use the shrink wrap modifier in order to wrap to this surface right here. But then after you apply that, you could then apply like a solidify modifier on the outside of that. And you could give this a thickness. So you can use this to wrap different details around objects in here as well. And one of the cool things about that is this is because this is live, right? So if I was to duplicate this, notice how I can add this detail really quickly inside of my scene and it's live. So I can come in here and I can adjust the different surfaces like this, and it's still gonna give me that full on result. So again, because this is a modifier, you can use this in order to quickly make changes without destructively editing your model. So that's an overview of how this works. You can use this in order to place like decals on objects or to wrap actual geometry along objects. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. So leave a comment down below. Let me know if you're interested in any of those. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.